cold night in western Pennsylvania as we bring you inside Heinz Field here in Pittsburgh. This was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the Atlanta Falcons. The calendar has turned to December, and we're in the home stretch now as we're underway in Week 13. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled it to 15. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. The last run good for two, here's second and eight. to throw sliding out of the pocket and then nearly an interception here on this opening drive but he gets a reprieve it's third down they certainly did a nice job improvising there extending the play hoping someone would come open downfield but they never did So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Looking left side, and it's complete. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 42. And that throw there going to put him over 4,000 yards passing now for the season, maybe strengthening his MVP consideration. And you figure with still a handful of games left to play, 5,000 yards is not totally out of the realm of possibility. The way he is playing, I think he's going to get there. Flush to his right. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. Second and two. Rolling to his left. That is caught. Michael Pittman with it. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 18. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15. A gain of three. Defensively here, you're facing a top-five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high power, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. They'll drop the throw. And it's caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Robert Tunyon, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Falcons take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. 
Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. What up, Jason? for the first time with Najee Harris and nothing doing he's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage tackle made that time by Vida Vea the play action fake they'll look to throw he'll buy some time right and his throw is going to be incomplete this is going to be the matchup to watch out on the perimeter and it won't be the last time these two go at it both of them believe they are the superior in this case the win goes to the defense. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. They'll set up a throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting... Uh, no, I'm not bumping that new young boy, but uh, I am curious. I'm so I may end up listening to it, though. Touchdown. a play fake as they set up to throw open man that's Noah Fant the tight end and that's going to be good for another first down as the tackles made at the Falcons 28 well, I think when they look at their offense they think to themselves weapons weapons everywhere and they want to move the ball around they want to spread it to different people but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well and that's what they just did on that play and they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. On the give, this is Harris. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Back to throw here. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Tyreek Hill, touchdown number 15 of the year. And the Steelers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Now the try here for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he's probably realizing he should have stayed in the end zone as he can only muster a return to the 14-yard line. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons' offense at the line. Well, they had to go the length of the field last time out to get into the end zone. And with this starting field position, they're going to have to pretty much do it again. And I think the thought process going into it is, hey, if you have to be methodical, go ahead. And this turns.
plays into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm not totally privy to what went on with their offensive meetings, but Charles, something tells me that one wasn't in the play. Yeah, when we had our production meeting, they didn't exactly share that with us. But I'm pretty sure that on the play sheet, the run backwards into your own end zone play was not written down. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Now a play fake here on first down. And going deep for Hill. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Tyreek Hill, 79 yards. And the Steelers get the quick strike touchdown. Now for the point after. And that makes it a nine-point game. We are in for a good one as we're through one on EA Sports. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And last time they surrendered to safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you've got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. Second down and inches. Rolling to... And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. They'll throw. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Brian Burns racking up sack number 12 for him on the year. Here's Tommy Townsend on the punt. Back deep is Tyreek Hill. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, to see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the last that's time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. This is Harris. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. On second down, it's Harris. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. 
They'll look to throw. He is going to find Hill here. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Second and 10, a very chilly day here, but no snow. And I got to say, if it's going to be this cold, I want snow. <laughs> you should see Charles' face. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 42 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. On first down, it's Jordan. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. difficult but they've made it look effortless out there through the air on the ground they've moved the ball with relative ease Scored touchdowns on drives one and two, and now they're trying to make it a perfect three for three to start. And he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second? And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Najee Harris with a lucky number 13 touchdowns now on the year. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. Extra point right down the middle. And that could be important as that makes this a 16-point lead. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And a first half that really has not been kind to them. A late opportunity here to maybe make some inroads on this deficit before half. And this drive is going to go a long way towards telling us whether they actually have a chance to come all the way back in this game or not. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Steps away. And try to get it to Samuel, but it's intercepted. Picked off near the 34. And Charles, that's now four interceptions over his last three halves of football. Because remember, he threw three picks last week. Starting to wonder if maybe defenses and those coordinators have identified something on tape with what he's doing. Maybe a movement, maybe the way he's moving his shoulders. Who knows what it could be? He could have a few tells out there that they're keying in on and allowing defenses to get to the football a little bit faster. People steal signals. Maybe sometimes they can figure out what the quarterback's doing just by his movements. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there forcing a loss on that play. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. On 
the give is Nwangu. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Kene Nwangu as the first half is winding down. And the Steelers will extend their lead here just before halftime. They have really had their way so far in the first half, but they wanted to continue to build on their lead. They know that no lead is safe in this league, so they decided to try their best to get one more as they headed into the half, and they got it done. The extra point splits the uprights, and that pushes the lead up to 23. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up men. And they've got it up past the 35, so pretty good starting field position. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And with eight seconds on the clock, really not a lot of time to try to put anything together. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Minka Fitzpatrick, and he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. So time for the second half as the Steelers have the lead and they will also be receiving the football here to start the third quarter. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. Back to throw. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. 57 yards rushing for him now in the ball game, And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, Makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. The last run got six, now second and four. They'll look to throw here. That's swung out wide to Harris. And so close, he gets it to the one. Out of bounds right there. A big play that time on the catch and run. Tell you what, partner, you get the football in his hands, just give him a little bit of open space. As we just saw, he can make you back. And he wasn't the top option. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Najee Harris with his 14th touchdown of the year, second of the game. And the Steelers take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Point after, right down the middle. And that will extend this big lead. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And last time was a pretty one play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give it to the ball. Now the ball comes loose. 
much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately, had an alert teammate who was able to get it. Now a dump off here complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They'll look to throw now on first down. Buying time to his left. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked out and incomplete. Well, defensively, they haven't let him just sit in the pocket and get comfortable. And that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. Ordinarily, you're trying to keep the quarterback hemmed in. In this case, they brought the heat. And if he flushes out, they're fine with that. And they force another incompletion. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked up by Michael O.J. Mudia. And a big return will get him all the way down to the 35. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because oh, here we are in December. Right, it is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake after the game, he may have to announce that he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he throws. So, first and ten, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second-half blowout material. Handoff here to Nwangu, and he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal... Shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. But you know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. They're going to look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Touchdown! A great effort there. His ninth touchdown of the season. And the interception by the Steeler D leads to a touchdown. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead is swung by one more. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons offense at the line. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Oh, I'm not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. On third down, he'll drop to throw. They'll roll him out right. The ball comes out, but this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. Second time he's fumbled in this game. Fortunate for him, this one goes out of bounds. And the key for him now is how much equity have you built up with your coaching staff? How much equity have you built up with your team to continue to get opportunities? Fortunate that one went out of bounds, saved him from a turnover. And they're going to at least line up to go for it here on fourth down. They're going to try and throw. And the catch made. It's Tyler Boyd. 
And he will have a first down here at about the 40. And it looked like some movement there. Let's get the call. So that'll back him up five. They'll set up to throw. Forced out to his left. This is caught. It's Boyd. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. They'll run on first down. Samuel. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Well, they certainly have been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got just pin their ears back and get after him now. Second and nine now. Throw right side is going to be caught by Samuel. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. He'll look to throw. It returns it right back to Samuel. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. Back to throw now on first down. Steps away to his left. And he'll be forced out of bounds shy of the line of scrimmage. So that'll be credited as a sack. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. So when the defense complains about having to do pursuit drills in the heat of training camp, plug in this play. Excellent pursuit. Force the quarterback out of the pocket. He ends up trying to run for it. Instead, he goes out of bounds and loses yardage. That goes down as a sack for the defense. Second and 11, sliding out of the pocket. And he wisely will throw that one away. Defensively, you said coming in earlier in the broadcast, the magic number was 20 points for you. That's what you thought they would have to hold this offense to or, or less than that. And wow, they've done that in a big way, haven't they? And not only have they done it, they put themselves in a great position to win this one because holding them down was paramount. If they could get it done... Well, guess what? We see the end result. Right now, they have their eye on victory. And leading here in the fourth. The Falcons on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 11. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. These type of plays are backbreakers for our defense. They thought they had him hemmed in, thought they were going to get him on the ground with the pass rush, but were unable to do so. He gets away, picks up a big first down, and sets up first and goal inside the 10. He'll look to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Michael Pittman, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Falcons get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. Tucker with the extra point as they make the score just a slight bit more respectable here in the final quarter of play. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Oh, a mistake there. The kickoff out of bounds. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Mm -hmm. 
So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at the 40. They hand this off to Harris. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. They dial a running play here with Hill. And some room to run now. And finally out of bounds down near the 10-yard line. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. I think you can make a fair case for Tyreek Hill being the most explosive player in the NFL when he gets his hands on the football, and that was exhibit A. So now following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. Now a give, running left is Harris. And he'll get about four there as he takes it from the 10 down to the 6. He's hit pay dirt a lot this year, but not that time. Yeah, I'm tracking right there with you. You're exactly right. He's found the end zone plenty of times. No way I can find any fault with the call. He may not have scored there, but of course you're going to give it to him. Now a second down and six. They run again with Harris. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. Harris. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Najee Harris, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Steelers are about to make it four straight as they add to this fourth quarter advantage. Extra point splits the uprights. And that will extend this big lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover. They want to try and put points on the board. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons' offense at the line. And their mini two-game win streak appears it might be going by the wayside unless they can pull a rabbit out of their hat. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Out to his left. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free at its second down. I know he was trying to get the completion downfield, but the way this game has gone, with a few of the runs he's made along the way, he should have kept the ball and taken it with his feet downfield. That's the big play that shreds the defense. Instead, he thought to himself, I'm a quarterback. I've got to throw it. He bailed out the defense with that incompletion. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. We saw a lot of that a week ago defensively from him, AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Just always seems to be around the football. I like your observation there. Understands the game, understands positioning, can put himself in the right spot, and then make a play on the football. Set up a throw. He'll buy some time right. Open man is Samuel complete. And he'll take this across the 25 before going out of bounds. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. 
So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. On first down, Samuel. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. A play action fake. They'll look to throw. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The Falcons on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and forever. They'll drop to throw. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. A hit as he throws, and this is going to be incomplete. The Falcons go for it, but it doesn't work out. And boy, possession here turns over with the football already being in the red zone. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Gets it to Hill. It's a jet sweep. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. I'm not sure what other ground there is to cover here. I mean, this offense has been amazing. Just total domination, Charles. They click so well. And if you really focus in on the offensive line, they protected well when they wanted to throw the ball. They moved people off the line of scrimmage when they wanted to run it. Smiles all the way around. This offense has been really good in this one. Play after, right down the middle. And the lead will swell by one more. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes the return. And he's only going to make it to the 13-yard line and no further. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons' offense at the line. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> Offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the... And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked up by Michael O.J. Media. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six. First Steeler touchdown. Defensively, they've had their way in this one. That pick six makes that scoreboard even more lopsided. I remember talking with a guy in the league, and I said, what are you doing when the game's like this? You know, it's pretty much over. You ready to go to the bench and hang out? He said, oh, heck no. I want to stay on the field. I might get some stats. I might get a pick or two. <laughs> you like being out there at the end of these wide margins. When they have to throw it, that gives you more opportunities to go get it. Extra point right down the middle, and that will extend this big lead. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And they just had that pick six. I guess the only positive may be them returning that for a touchdown. This offense right back out onto the field to try to make up for it. I like that because now it doesn't give them a chance to go to the bench and really settle. You know, to sit there and kind of seethe over the idea that they turned the ball over previously. Right back out there. It's almost like hopping right back on the bike after falling over. See if they can get the ball moving again. Yeah, we'll see if they can do it here. 
Here's second and ten. Back to throw here. And my goodness, another interception. Run it well and it's picked. And they'll have it just five yards away from pay dirt here first and goal. Yet another mistake after the interception there. And gosh, you look up at the scoreboard, they just got to be thinking this one cannot get over fast enough. It certainly can't. And also what happens when you get this big of a deficit, you're supposed to make all the right throws, right? You're supposed to try and obviously get the ball to your own guys. But being down this big, you also take even more chances. And in this situation, that hasn't paid off for them at all. On the other sideline, jubilation and laughter. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They've got a second and goal now as they look to add a few more points here onto their total. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. What a stand so far defensively. And now that's going to bring up a fourth and goal. Counting down toward 40 seconds as they take the knee. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow. Talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule that if someone does it to them, you won't hear people protest out of them. That's just who they are. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Another throw there off the mark. And obviously he's battled all of the interceptions. Things just haven't been true to form for him. I don't know. What do you think is going on out there, CD? That's a great question. And my suspicion is he's been coached really well to not show that he's having a problem. You know, they always tell you, no matter what, you keep throwing the football with confidence. Well, we're not seeing a confident thrower right now. He's off balance, the passing game's off balance, and the defense is taking advantage. From deep in their own territory, they look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. They've got his man complete. And all the way down to the 39. A big connection on that one. 58 yards on the run. He'll let this go deep right side. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style.